Games coming in in quick uh, succession. Uh, Derby away next. The, they're a funny one, aren't they? In that they've obviously got a, a boatload of problems on and off the pitch, but they have managed to get themselves four points for this stage. How, how do you how do you look at Derby? Uh, I think they've got some good players. You know, I mean, they signed Jags this week, one of my lads, and 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 and, and Baldock are two good players. And I mean, numbers wise, that I don't think we've got many more than them. So I don't, I don't think there's a, you know, I think it's a, it's a big club. They've had a bad time. I think Mel's been trying to sell it for, for years, you know, and um, and hopefully they'll get new owners soon. Uh, Mel can relax a little bit, and and Wayne can take the club forward. So it's a difficult start for him, isn't it? I mean, it's a baptism of fire, really. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, they've got some good players. So it's uh, it's one of those things. I think he he was he's been inside the club, so he knows what he's got. I don't think he'd have took it if he didn't know that you know he got a decent squad to work with. And yes, I know that financial, but everybody's financially tight at the minute. So do you think it's a, a little bit overstated then? The yeah, idea, I, th- I think so. such trouble. I think so. Yeah, but I mean, you you know you can you can understand why it's like that. Mm. Um, you go in there. It, it, it felt weird on Wednesday, and that it. it it was a game that I think lots of people enjoyed, and, and you you created the chances, you scored goals, and yet you've come away with nothing. Have you have you got your head around it yet, really? Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's you know, um, uh, I thought goals would be our problem, and then we go and concede three. It's it's you know, it's not easy. But you know, you look at the goals, and and really, um, it's not like the lads who, who were involved. You know, you'd ex- I were quite pleased on the touchline. Um, as the second and third goal developed, I were quite pleased. I didn't couldn't foresee uh, anybody scoring from those the positions that they were in against the players they were against. Um, even the first goal, you know, there's three red shirts behind Johnny um, and and Joe. I don't know what the you know. I'm not had a good chat with the communication, but you know, I'll have to talk to that um, this morning. But um, you know, all disappointing goals really. But I thought it was a cracking match. I really enjoyed it. Apart from like you say. Apart from us conceding goals like that, I thought we played against a good side, and I, and I thought we should have won the game. So, when you have a night like that, do you, do you look at it as probably just a, a bit of a blip and, and <coughs> hope it won't repeat? Well, you try and eliminate the the errors really. Um, some you can't, you know. I think the you know the second goal, is, you know, Joe just takes it, puts his hand up and says he shouldn't have gone in, not from that angle. Um, but other than that, we have to work harder. To, to make sure we um, we you know we're defending better positions and you know we have done in the past um, I, I, you know it's difficult to put your finger on why certain lads did different things to what they normally do. Do you think it's coming together then? Certainly in an attacking sense. Well, I just think the team's been coming together. Yeah, I think um, uh, I do enjoy watching us play. If I'm honest, um, and I don't mind where we go, whether it's top of league, bottom of league, they're all difficult games, but. You know, we've got a group of players that I think are enjoying, enjoying the challenge. Really, I think they're all distraught like me uh, after the game, and still can't understand how we've lost it. Um, but it's a, you know, it's, it's a lesson, and yes, we've got to enter, we've got to enjoy ourselves as much as we can, but be a little bit more disciplined. Now, now you'll appreciate that as we approach the end of the transfer window, there's there's lots of interest in in how your squad's going to look. You know, at the end of this month. Are you are you on the verge of bringing in any of these players that we're reading about, like Mitchell van Bergen or Andras Sporan? Um, not at the moment, no. But uh, have you not read our website today? We signed somebody this morning. Oh, do you know what? I haven't. Go on, is that? Um, Dear is that, me, I can't believe you? you lads will have to, and ladies, you'll have to look at these. You know, I'm not shouldn't be doing your job for you. <laughs> um, but uh, no, he's uh, uh, Toyo said. Well, we've got to call him T. Like he wants to be called T. So. You'll remember Mr. T. Mr. T in the old A. What was it, the A? Yeah, I ain't getting on a plane, Phil. Mr. T. Uh, so he wants to be called T. I think it's easier for everybody. Um, but sure. it, it's good. I, I, we we had an hour last night on the training ground, just going through one or two things. He's only from non league. He's, he's asking an awful lot. But I just I just fancy um, having a go with him. If I'm honest, I said to Steve, "Can I have a little go?" He's not, you know, it's not costing a lot of money. Um, he's just such a breath of fresh air when I've seen him play. And then it turns out he's brought up in the next road to Isaiah Jones, so they've oh, been nice. they've been good mates, uh, good friends from many many years ago, which I didn't know about. So it's uh, it's really good to have him on board. I'm, 
he's an exciting player. Yes, he's like you say, a little bit green behind the ears, but hey ho, well, you know, let's let's uh, give it a go. And when you say like you know, can I have a little go with him? So clearly, he's one for the first team. Then he's one that you think could potentially make a difference in the championship. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, we can't we can't sort of sprint before you know. I think you've got to be careful with lads like this. He's, he's coming from Villa Rique, and, and he's playing in the top of the championship game. So we've we've just got to be a little bit careful. But I'm I'm like this, me. If you're good enough, it don't matter where you are. And I look at him and what his his strengths are. Not so much what his weaknesses are, we've got to be working on that, but his strengths are that you don't want to play against somebody like him. And uh, he's very direct, um, lovely lad, wants to learn. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I've spoke to him a few, quite a few times, and like I say, non-league, it just it interests me. That I love, I came from non-league, and uh, it, nothing that would make me happier than seeing him blossom here for the next few years. How big a step is it then for him, do you think? Uh, I don't know how many steps it is. You'll have to work it out. And in the, in the, it's about five or six, isn't it? Upwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, in, you know, yeah, I know what you mean. The size uh, of the task. It is hard. The only thing about this is when you've got what he's got, um, training with better players and the quality that we've got will bring him on no end. That's what's happened with Isaiah. I mean, Isaiah overnight would never have dreamt that he'd be starting our games and, and looking a threat like he is. Um, and it's the same with Josh Coburn. He's actually a lot stronger now. He had a great week's training last week, did Josh. So he's coming more into my thoughts as well. So it's great to see these lads. And, you know, now that I know that uh, that T knows Isaiah, I think that's even made it better for me because it is easier to club when you know somebody and you can, you know, you can go and have a chat with them and talk about where you come from and what have you. And they're both, you know, they're both um, sort of, being cast aside by clubs and we've picked them both up now. All right, if it's if he doesn't work out, it's all my fault. There's nobody else to blame. It's uh, there's only me that wanted him, so uh, I just wanted to have a go with him. That's all. He's a lovely lad, like I said, and uh, he's he's got a little bit of pace and power, and I think he'll put defenders under pressure, and I think he'll play like Isaiah. There's no worries with these kids now. They they just want to play football, and I think it's lovely that. And is he definitely one for, for through the middle then, or, or could you see him maybe playing out wide as well? No, he plays he plays wide. Yeah, I think he prefers uh, down the left where Isaiah is, um, but he can play right, and, and I think he's played behind the, the striker and anywhere. But he's that type of lad. I think if I told him to go anywhere, I think you know they are them types of lads that will do anything for you. So just, just on the other players then, I mean, because clearly you, you do want to strengthen your squad, as, as we're all well aware. Is it getting a bit tight now with the, the deadline approaching? No, we're still going. We're still going down the line. What we what we want. Um, you know, there's so many things that you need that will happen just before the deadline. It, it happens like that every year, doesn't it? So that doesn't surprise me. Ins and outs happen at the last minute, so you just don't know what's going to happen. But I've just got to be aware of the you know what we could lose and what we need to bring in and keep plugging away really, and that's what we're doing. And, and just on the out uh, possibilities, Tuber Akpom, uh, apparently Panathinaikos are quite keen on, on taking him on loan. Is that something you would countenance at this stage? Well, I mean, I've, I've not heard anything about that. So, so um, you know, you'd have to, uh, we'll have to deceive. Uh, like I said to you, there's only zero, just over a week to go now. Things like that, um, whilst they are, a lot of them are just gossip, uh, things like that do crop up. Um, you know, and, and, and as and when we will look at each, you know, each uh, as it comes, you know, same with like Dijon. And, um, you know, we'll look at whatever comes up in that respect because I have got two keepers now. Um, so, you know, things like that will, will happen in the next few, you know, next few days or, you know, 10 days, something like that. It's put a bit of a spring in your step, it appears, that's signing. Well, I just, I just, I, it just brought back memories for me when I first started at Burton Albion. And I signed a kid from the Sunday League, uh, a lad called Ian McLean. And uh, and he was like him. He was fresh and um, very quick. And, oh, God, he, he got some stick in that league in the Northern Premier. They kicked chunks out of him. But uh, it just, you know, it cheered me up at, at Burton. And just watching him, you know, I mean, uh, and then when I met him in this lad, he just, he just impressed me. And his desire to do well, he's very much like Uchi. Uchi, I've never met a more humble man. Than Uche, he wasn't financially. I think he's probably our lowest paid Uche. He just uh, he wanted to come, 
and he wanted to show everybody, I want to, I think Middlesbrough is the best club in the world type of thing, and I want to show everybody at Middlesbrough that, well, how good I am, and I think you take your hat off to people like that. You know, it, 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 you know, we've had, let's be honest, over the last few years, we've had a few big earners that, um, you know, could take a lesson from Uchi at times. Um, but we're lucky to have these lads, and that's why the, the non-league, you know, T, I, I was so pleased to get him, really, because, like I say, I do... I do think he could have an input, whether it's from the bench or what have you, uh, even as early as this, you know. Will he go to Derby then? Will you, will you be chucking him straight in? Well, he'll be travelling to Derby to, uh, to, with the lads, are you with me? Just to, uh, uh, it, it's good for him, you know, he's up here on his own now, so we'll, uh, we'll integrate him with the, with the rest of the lads, I'm sure. I bet he's looking forward to training this morning, you know, with the lads. He's not trained with them yet, and it it is great when you... You know, you've got such good pros at the club, like, you know, Paddy McNair, Johnny House and Grant Hall, you know, Dale Fry, they're all absolute credit to us. Um, that's why we need a, a, a Lee Peltier and a, a Sol Bamber at times. You, you've got to have a, a few of those around. Um, and and I think it's a good mix at the moment. You're not flying to Derby, are you? Because you won't get on the plane. <laughs> no, we're not flying to Derby, no. We're, we're going on the bus so I can read my papers. Football's seen some amazing success stories from non-league, hasn't it? Like, you know, Jamie Vardy and, mm -hmm. and players like that. And you just never know when the next one's going to show himself, do you? And I suppose this could be the guy. Well, sometimes when you're... He was at Wimbledon as a young boy, and so he had the grounding, and then he got chucked out, really. And and so sometimes when you like that and you go out to non-league, it's like our under twenty three. Sometimes you've got to go out to grow up and and to become back. And and that's what he's done. He's he's worked hard. He's been very very determined on his training schedule this last couple of years. He's he hasn't just arrived by chance by doing nothing and just turning up to play. Um, the lads work really hard on his physical aspect of the game, and it's paid off. And it uh, doesn't matter what standard you're at, whether it's Bill or Ricky or the standard below that. If you start playing well and well, you get noticed. And uh, like I say, it's it's great to see somebody like that and, and give him an opportunity. So what is it you see in him? Or, or does he just have a sort of X factor? Now, what I see in him is I just love it when people, like Isaiah's had a couple of good games, I love it when people get the ball and run at people and, and the defenders don't know what to do with them and... Uh, and he sniffs a goal. He can score a few. I think he's had a few this year. Um, but he, he can sniff goals out, left to right foot, two good, two good feet, um, and that desire to get in there. Um, so yes, we'll have to educate him about a lot of things. He might, you know, you get away with a bit of murder uh, in the in the non-league uh, about your defensive duties. But we don't want to take too much away from what he's good at. No, you can't afford him to be sent off every five <laughs> no, minutes no. either. No. <laughs> um, you mentioned Isaiah there. To be perfectly honest, before this season, I didn't even know he was at Middlesbrough. But of all the players who've kind of impressed so far, I would say he sort of stands out. Well, I think he epitomises that group of, of of players now that are so confident in their own ability. I think when they come into our group and they play with the players that they've got, you know, no disrespect to 18s and 23s, but... You know, you, you make runs in this league and you get the ball. Um, you know, it's it's sometimes you pull your hair out when you're in the 18s and 23s. I could never coach the 18s and 23s in a million years. I don't know how Graham Lee does it and, and Lids uh, because it is so frustrating. Um, but, um, you know, they are there. They're so confident now. And Josh Coburn, um, this last two weeks, he seems to have just grown up, uh, you know, bit, really become a bit of a colossus. So... I think it's nice to have Isaiah and him, and and then this lad uh, coming in, um, who's I think he's there's only one other quicker than him on the tests on the sprint tests, and uh, but he did you know they did say that they thought he was holding back yesterday when he did that, so I, I would I would imagine he'll be the quickest at the club. Who's the quickest at the moment then? I don't know. I never asked that if I'm honest. I just want <laughs> I just wanted to know who he was. Uh, how many he was, and he said he's only he's in the second, the highest. But we think he was holding back a little bit. Shorty said yeah. to me, not so, to show the others up, probably. Yeah. Um, and just just one more for me on on Martin um, Piero, one of your other uh, signings this summer. When do you think he's likely to make his first league start? That I don't know. You know, he, he, he the physicality of the game and the new new country, new culture, language. You know. Um, 
So I, I just think, I mean, I was talking to Steve the other day and I said to him, it might take a couple of months, you know, and he said to me straight away, it took Janino three months. He didn't even look a player for three months. And then all of a sudden it, it triggered, you know. So I wouldn't mind him doing the same as him in three months' time. No, nor would the Borough fans. They'd be delighted with that. Um, good luck. Thanks very much, Neil. Thank you, Don. Simon. Simon. Hello, Neil. How are you? There. Hi, Simon. All right, thank you. Yeah, good. Um, just hearing what you're saying there about um, the lads coming from non-league, lads coming up from, from the youth set-up, um, the Argentinian midfielder, Piero, that kind of thing. You, you sound really enthusiastic about the, the sort of mix you've got in this squad. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I don't think I've had a better team. Um, I just think we can brush up on one or two things um, now over the next few weeks to keep us up there. Uh, that's what we've got to do until these players do intermingle with us and get to know how we, you know, what we want, etc. But yeah, I, mean, I am excited. I'm excited because of the crowd, really. I mean, how can you not get excited when you you turn up and and on the Saturday it'll be the, exactly the same at Derby. They'll make themselves heard like nothing. So it's it's great. It's a great time, I think, in football. Um, I suppose you could say a, a minor bump in the road the other night, but there's going to be bumps in the road in the Championship. You know that as well as anybody. Uh, how crucial over the course of the season is it how well you bounce back from those bumps in the road? It's always, it's always been like that, really, right from the start. Um, it, it's the adversity that you've got to overcome. And, you know, I mean, on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, I think I had two hours kept, you know, two o'clock, I'm tossing and turning, couldn't get back to sleep, are you with me? So uh, that never goes away, but by nine o'clock that morning, you've got to, I'm, I'm the one that's got to come in and come on, lads, let's go, you know. So I have my few hours where I mope myself uh, and then I brush myself down and start again and that's what you've got to do. Not just in football, in life in general. We all have disappointments. You've just got to put them behind you and get on with it because it's a wonderful world.